My name's Bernard Bishop on the, uh, well, I'm not the warden now. I've been warden on here for over 40 years. I started working for the trust in 1972 when my father was the warden here. And then when he retired in 1979, I was fortunate enough to get the job. And here I am still here. I live in the house I was born in, which is right on the marsh, so I'm here all the while. Some people say, have I lived here all my life? I say, no, not yet, not quite. The history of the reed cutting goes back a long, long while before my time. It's been a very family affair. My brother David used to come. And now it's Darren, my nephew, and my son, Calvin, my grandson, Ben. He's at college in Norwich, so that'll be five generations that have cut reed and worked on these marshes, which obviously I'm very proud about. We get here sort of first thing in the morning, and I usually do some cutting for the boys. I don't do, do that much now. But I cut, we cut some and then they have a small rake uh, with a couple of six inch nails and they clean, clean the rubbish out at the bottom and get them nice and clean and put a piece of string around. And then they're knocking on a knock and board and tied and that's it. But it's lovely just to be using a natural thing, you know, something that's, that's grown and, you know, the lovely colour of the leaves on it, uh, the flower at the top with all the seed heads in. Well, the reeds, of course, we, we here at Cly, we, we do cut the same area each year. Uh, it's called single mile. It's, it's what the Thatcher wants, really. Uh, we've got lots and lots of other places where they're, they're left to, to grow and, and, and left alone. And it, it's actually one year's growth, you know. You've got a six or seven foot reed. It's actually grown from probably March till the middle of August. And when you've got several hundred acres of reed like we have here at Cly, that's a lot of water being taken up. In the, uh, in the spring and summertime. The, what, what we cut, we sell to the local thatchers. Well, not so much local thatchers. We've, had, we've even had reed go to Ireland. We've had reed go to America, even. Norfolk reed is supposed to be the best. Uh, unfortunately, young boys don't want to be doing it. Uh, ben is probably the youngest reed cutter in Norfolk at the moment. So, as I say, it's a great pity that, that the youngsters aren't coming into it. My son is very keen. You know, he's, he's really keen. He, he just loves being Darren now. I suppose it's in his blood, really. Uh, and Darren, my nephew, you know, they really look forward to this time of the year when they're down here and cutting the reed. And it's just a magical, quiet place, uh, especially in the... Sometimes when you get the light on the reeds when you're cutting and working away, and even Ben, who, who I was with yesterday, he said to me, Grandad, this is absolutely brilliant down here. He said, there's just no one about this peaceful, quiet. One of the nicest things is the first sound of the pink-footed geese coming in, sort of September time when you hear them coming. We used to put 2,000 bundles of reed stacked on a lorry, which was an all-day job. Now we band them in bales of 100, and, and the lorry that comes has a high ab, and they just lift it on, so that's taken a lot of the work out of it. I mean, the reed have to be managed. It's such a vast area. Uh, in the old days, I would clear an area by making a ride all the way round and, and burning it off. We used to have the fire brigade turn up. I had them turn up three three times one day. Met the head fire chap with a white hat on. He said, what, what provisions have you made if it gets out of hand? I said, well, none. I said, we just go on. That'll go on. Mm -hmm.